Hi, my name is Elizabeth Brown. Today I'm introducing two new Tecmar thermostats, the Thermostat 518, which will directly replace the current models 507 and 508, and the Radiant Thermostat 519, which will directly replace the current 509. Why did we make the change? Because we value our customer feedback and we listened to what you had to say about how our classic series thermostats needed to improve. But just like the previous models, the new thermostats are still designed to optimize comfort in a radiant system. They just got a whole lot easier to use. Unlike simple on-off thermostats, the new Tecmar thermostats are designed to prevent uncomfortable temperature swings. By actively adjusting the heat input, they keep the temperature exactly at the target, where you want it. 518 and the 519 are identical thermostats. The only difference is that the 519 comes bundled with a slab sensor 079 to allow for better control of radiant installations. Today I'm going to demonstrate how to install and set up a radiant thermostat 519 so that you can see for yourself just how simple it really is. One of the improvements you'll likely appreciate is the change in enclosure. We not only made these thermostats easier to use, they're also easier to wire. To remove the cover from the base, simply push in the bottom tab and pull the top half away from the bottom. You'll notice we move the wiring strip to the base instead of on the back of the cover. This not only makes it easier to wire, it also allows us to remove the cover for safekeeping until it's time to commission the system later. There are several ways to mount the thermostat base to the wall. You can mount it directly to a 2x4 electrical box using the adapter plate 012, or like I'm going to do in this video, a direct to drywall installation using wall anchors. We'll start by marking the locations for the wall anchors and for where the wiring will feed through. I'm installing this about 5 feet off the ground, and I'll mark my locations for the wall anchors, and then lastly the location for where the wiring will come. I'll start by drilling small pilot holes for the wall anchors. And then a larger hole for where the wiring will feed through. Now we'll insert the wall anchors. and we're ready to mount the base. As you can see, I already pulled the wire through to the thermostat. We're gonna start by connecting the wires to the sensor, to the transformer, and to the heat relay. Starting with the sensor wiring, I have two wires coming from my sensor, which I am connecting to the S1 and the COM terminals on the 518. Now these connections are not polarity sensitive, so it's impossible to get it wrong. You will most likely be connecting the slab sensor 079 here, but you could also connect another auxiliary sensor like an outdoor sensor or a remote room sensor. Regardless of which sensor you choose, the 518 and the 519 will automatically detect it. I'm gonna demonstrate wiring the thermostat to his own valve with power from a 24 volt transformer. We'll connect the R from the transformer to the R on the thermostat. Likewise, we'll connect the C from the transformer to the C on the thermostat. We'll add power to the heat relay by installing a jumper between R and RH. Lastly, we're going to bring the wire in from the zone valve. Now, the other wire at the zone valve will go directly to the C on the transformer. The wire from the zone valve will go to the W1 terminal on this thermostat. And we're all wired. Comparing the 518 or the 519 to previous thermostats, you will immediately notice how the user interface has been improved. Four round buttons have been replaced with two triangular up and down buttons. We've eliminated the menu selection from our new thermostats. 
thereby eliminating the menu and the item buttons as well. That also means an end to complicated menu navigation, making way for easier setup and adjustment. Let's take a look at the settings in the first area of adjustment by pressing and holding both buttons for three seconds. This first area of adjustment is intended for homeowners, and this is where you can fine tune your preferences. The first setting is mode. You can change the mode between heat and off by pushing the up or down buttons. To move to the next setting, press and hold both buttons again. Units can be set to display temperatures in degrees Fahrenheit or in degrees Celsius. Light can be set to on, off, or auto. Auto will turn the backlight on for 30 seconds after you push a button. Set floor is the floor minimum setting. If you want warm floors for comfort, regardless of the room temperature, then you can set a minimum floor temperature here. Or you can turn this setting off by pushing the down button all the way past 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Type displays the thermostat model number. You can exit this first adjustment area here at Escape by releasing the buttons. More advanced settings, intended for the installer, are accessed by continuing to hold both buttons for five more seconds. The first setting here specifies the auxiliary sensor. Are you using a floor sensor, a remote room sensor, or an outdoor sensor? Remember, since this thermostat will detect the presence of an auxiliary sensor, this setting will only appear if you are indeed using an auxiliary sensor. The second setting allows you to enable or disable the built-in room sensor on the thermostat. In applications where you want the thermostat to operate based solely on the auxiliary sensor, then you can turn the built-in room sensor off. Examples of these types of applications include floor warming in bathrooms, or when thermostats are installed in the mechanical room with remote room sensors throughout the building. If you do want to use the built-in room sensor, make sure it is set to on. If you're using an auxiliary floor sensor, the next setting will allow you to configure the floor maximum temperature. Refer to the installation and operation manual for this thermostat for some recommended settings based on flooring material. By configuring the floor minimum, maximum, and leaving the built-in room sensor on, the thermostat will operate the radiant floor between the minimum and maximum temperatures to achieve a target room temperature. It is important to realize that the floor minimum setting will always be in effect as long as the mode is set to heat. This may inadvertently cause overheating in the summer when floor warming is undesired. To disable floor warming, it is necessary to set the thermostat mode to off. There are two ways to turn the mode off. You can do so in the first area of adjustment, where mode is the first setting that you see. Use the down button to set it off. The mode can also be set to off by pushing and holding the down arrow until the room set point drops below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. This is similar to turning a radio dial all the way down to its off position. When you would like to turn the heat on again, simply press the up or down button and the mode setting will appear on the screen. Turn the mode back to heat with the up button and the thermostat will resume operation to maintain the last entered room set point. It's that easy. We at Tecmar are really proud to be introducing the Thermostat 518 and the Radian Thermostat 519, and we know you're going to love them too. We've made improvements that make these products easier to install, easier to set up, and easier to use. These thermostats, like all Tecmar products, feature the better design with better control for the better system.